Annyeong haseyo. I am Reverend Sean Delmore from the White River Junction in Vermont United Methodist Church. And I am Reverend Betha Gorell from the Lebanon, New Hampshire United Methodist Church. And today we want to bring you a word of assurance and action, a reminder that God takes care of us and is a good and gentle shepherd. Let's start by listening for the voice of Jesus who speaks through the Gospel of John in chapter 10, starting at verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep who do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. Thanks be to God. I don't know much about sheep or tending sheep or shepherds that I didn't read in the Bible. Uh, but I did grow up in, in Vermont in farm country, just not sheep farming country, but uh, cow farming, of course, dairy farms. And my stepdad uh, was a was a farmer, and he's been he's been gone over a decade now. But he was a, a farmer of Jersey cattle and uh, loved his girls, as he called them, very much. And I this always makes me think of a story about uh, about John, my stepfather. Um, at one point, as as happens often, a uh, calf had been born and was was sickly, was just there was something not, not right. And, and unlike people, cows don't get, you know, echocardiograms or, or x-rays or CT scans to try to figure out what's wrong. He just knew that this, this calf was sickly. And so he cared for it. He actually brought it into the basement of the farmhouse from the barn and took care of it there and, and fed it by bottle many times a day in between chores and tried to keep it warm by the, by the heater in the basement and attended this little calf for well over a week before, unfortunately, the, the calf died. And when the vet came to, to collect the calf and examined it, they discovered that that this calf had been born with a hole in its heart. And there was no way it should even have been able to live a few days. But he nurtured this little calf and tended it. This big, gruff man who spoke more in grunts than words and um, yet had this tenderness and this heart for this little calf that, that really was of no benefit to him. But he loved it and he cared for it. And so it just reminds me of this, uh, this distinction between a, a hired hand or somebody who might, who might not have deep care for the members of their, their flock or their head of cattle, uh, but, but the farmer, the shepherd, knows these, these creatures really, really intimately and really deeply. And, and even the ones that, that he or she doesn't know but that are new cares for each one deeply, even the ones perhaps especially the ones that are sickly or that need the most love and care. And that, that God is a little bit like that, that farmer or that shepherd who, who loves each of us and, and would, would go to every length, whether it's laying down life for the sheep, chasing away the wolves, or taking the sickly calf into the basement and feeding it and caring for it. But that God loves us and cares for us that much. And we find in that message, in that point, the words of assurance for today, that as well as your John nurtured that calf, we are cared for, we are taken in, even in our moments of illness or struggling or distance from others, 
In moments of grief and happiness, there God takes us in, nurtures and cares for us. And so our, our challenge, our action for you this week is to think about how there might be something that you nurture, that you might feel again, that deep, all-encompassing care and nurture with which God provides for us, loves us, takes us in. So whether you care for a tender shoot from a seed you have just planted in this mud season, or whether you care for peace in your heart, whether you care for patience for those in your household, no matter what you care for, focus on nurturing something this week and feel in those moments the all-encompassing embrace of God. Thanks be to God who nurtures us and cares for us. God, we say thank you, Kansa Hamnida, and we, we give you our love and appreciation for the great love that has been given us and that we're able to share with one another. May you nurture and be nurtured. God bless.